Chapter 7, Free for All. Wally stood motionless in the hallway as his mother closed the door. Well, they certainly must have enjoyed that cake to eat it all in one meal. My goodness, my plate's cracked. You'd think they'd have taken better care of it, wouldn't you? Wally started to tell her what had happened to the plate, but he stopped. If he said any more, he'd have to explain why the girls had thrown it in the river. And if he told why, he'd have to tell about the dead fish and the way he'd banged Caroline's nose in class. They probably fed it to a dog, he said. Wallace, I don't know what's gotten into you lately. All you boys have been on edge. Maybe you don't have enough to do. Need a few extra chores around here? Who boy, thought Wally as he went upstairs. This evening sure hadn't turned out the way he had wanted. He and his brothers had had a laughing fit watching Caroline out there in the river. He never thought she would. And the boys would have waited around if they hadn't remembered that dinner was on the table. Wally laid on his stomach on his bed and stared down at the braided rug. He'd like to pull a loop on the Malloy sisters, that's what, and watch them come apart for once. It just wasn't like this when the Bensons lived in Buckman. Back then, they always signed each other's notebooks on the first day of school. They'd give each other new nicknames. Things were sure different now. Caroline and her black and blue nose, Eddie and that dumb cap, Beth and those books she reads. She'd left one on the steps a few minutes at recess, Josh had reported, and he had seen the cover. Fang, King of the Vampires. What kind of girl would read a book like that? When the Haver boys were ready for school the next day, they watched until the Malloys were across the bridge and up the sidewalk. You see what's happening, don't you? They're ruining our lives. They've only been here a week, and already we can't even leave for school when we want. We make sure they've got there first, and Mom thinks they're nice. They're poison! Wally did not turn around in his seat once to look at Caroline, and she didn't bother him. No blowing on the back of his neck or whispering. At lunchtime, he sat as far away from her table as he could. And when he left at the end of the day, Miss Applebaum said, Thank you, Wally, for being a good listener. Jake and Josh and Peter were waiting for him. What have you got to grin about? Wally asked Josh when he had a big smile on his face. At recess this afternoon, I went inside for a drink of water, and when I came out again, there's Beth on the bottom step reading her dumb book. Fang, King of the Vampires? Mm-hmm. I had my jacket tied around my shoulders, and when I spread out my arms, I looked like a giant bat. All I did was come slowly down the steps behind her, and she screamed her head off. I didn't even touch her. Jake and Wally and Peter all laughed. You get caught? No, but boy, was she mad. She said this was exactly the kind of thing that gave her nightmares. And I said, well, why did she read books like that if they gave her nightmares? Ha, said Jake. Home again, Wally had just poured himself some high C when the phone rang. Listen, came his mother's voice. Your father was talking about Miss Malloy this morning on his route, and she wondered who she could hire to wash their windows. Dad told her you boys have more time on your hands than is good for you and that you'd come over after school and help. Now, I don't want you to expect any payment. Wally yelped, Wally, it's not fair. They've got three girls who can wash windows. Eddie can climb up a ladder as well as any of us, and she's even taller than Josh. Besides, I've got plenty of things to do. Name one, Wally was speechless. He didn't have any homework to do. He didn't have, he didn't play on a team. He didn't even need a haircut. Wallace Hatford, you and your brothers have yourselves a snack and get on over to the Malloy's. With the four of you working, you can have their windows done in no time. And it's the least we can do for our new neighbors. Why, when we moved in, the Bensons came over and helped us wallpaper the dining room. I'll never forget it. And I don't want to hear any arguments. The receiver clicked and Wally stood staring at the phone in his hand. He didn't have to tell the others. They had already heard. We've got to wash their windows, right? Said Josh. Right. I'll bet Caroline put her mother up to this. Went right home and told her how much we wanted to help. And Dad probably said we'd do it for nothing. I'll wash their windows all right, said Jake. I'll put out their lights, curl their hair, and knock them into the middle of next week. Goodness, said Peter. Those girls think they can get away with anything. They need a good scare, that's what. Then maybe they'll leave us alone. But how? I'll think of something, Wally told him. 
By the time they finished their snack and headed off toward the Malloys, the boys had given up any idea of trying to scare the entire family, but they were convinced that they could scare Beth half out of her mind. And the thought and the vision of it, the sweet taste of victory in their mouths made the idea of washing the windows worth it. It would have been better, of course, if Caroline, Beth, and Eddie were not smirking at them as they came across the lawn, were not, in fact, sitting on a blanket out on the grass, sunning themselves with cookies and soft drinks beside them, ready to enjoy the show. It's, I'm so glad to meet you, said Mrs. Malloy. Your dad said you were the best window washers around, and I think it's wonderful the way you offered to help. Wiley didn't know whether he imagined it or whether he really did hear a snicker from Caroline. You do know each other, don't you? Mrs. Moy went on, motioning to the girls on the lawn. Eddie, Beth, and Caroline, this is... She paused, waiting for the boys to say their own names. Josh, said Jake. Jake, said Josh. Peter, said Wally. Wally, said Peter. Wally could hardly keep from grinning. Caroline looked at him and then at her mother, but she didn't say anything, and Wally knew why. If the girls squealed, the boys would tell about the cake. Even Stephen. Mrs. Malloy turned toward the house. We have these to do, as well as the storm windows there in the garage. We might as well do them all. Wally stared. There were 20 windows at least on the house, which meant 20 storm windows more stored in the garage. This time he heard a definite snicker from the girls. The girls will help, of course, said their mother, and Caroline's smile disappeared. So did Beth's and Eddie's. What you boys can do is get the ladder from the garage and soap each window. Eddie can turn the hose on them from below to rinse them, and you can dry them after that. Beth and Caroline will change the water whenever you need it and get clean rags. With all seven of you working together, I doubt it should take more than a couple hours. I'll have donuts and cider for you when you're done. Nice going, Jake said to Eddie. Eddie tossed her head and looked away. The old garage leaned a little to one side, but Wally didn't mind. It was his favorite place on the Benson's property, and he and his brothers and the Benson boys used to play in there for hours. For a time, they had turned it into a clubhouse, and other times, it had been become a hideout. It was dark and musty with loose boards that creaked in the wind. He and Jake carried the ladder from the garage and put it up to the first window of the house where Mrs. Moy was pointing. Eddie glumly got out, of the ho got out the hose, and after Ms. Malloy supervised the cleaning of the first window, she went back inside. Which window is yours, Eddie? I'll be sure to leave lots of smudges on it. Ha, ha. The reason the work went so quickly was because no one spoke much after that. Wally had read once about an order of monks who went about their work in silence and never spoke except for one hour on Friday evenings. This must be what it's like to be a monk, he decided, as he carried the last of the storm windows out of the garage, except there wouldn't be any girls there. Josh did the climbing on the ladder. Beth kept him supplied with clean water and rags. Jake and Wally carried storm windows in and out of the garage. Eddie hosed them off, and Caroline and Peter wiped the storm windows clean, in and out, up and down, back and forth. Mrs. Moy had been right about one thing. The work did go faster with so many of them helping. Once, as he passed Caroline, she looked so cheerful he was about to tell her about the monks who never talked except for on Friday evenings, but then he remembered she was the enemy. If there were girl monks, you know what they'd be called? Monkeys, Jake laughed. It was then that it happened, but no one knew quite how. It might have been Jake's laugh that made Eddie turn, hose in hand, but as she turned, the water made a loop in the air and caught Josh up on the ladder. His bucket came crashing to the ground with a splash two inches away from Beth, soaking her to the skin with brown, dirty water. While Wally stared, Beth pushed a sponge in Jake's face. Peter rushed to help his brother. Caroline went to help her sisters, and Wally simply tried to get the hose out of Eddie's hand, which was spewing water in every direction. The next great battle of the war had begun. Hey, what's this? Mrs. Moist came crying out. Girls, stop it! Wally, who had the hose now, was holding it upright like a pitchfork and realized that water was cascading down into Miss Malloy's flower bed. As he jerked it away, he sent a stream of water across the porch, catching the girl's mother right in the face. 
spluttering, Mrs. Malloy rushed down the steps and turned off the faucet and then stood there shaking water from her clothes. Now, what's this all about, she demanded. They started it, Mom, said Caroline. We did not. Eddie turned the hose on Josh. He dropped his bucket on purpose. I did not. You kids hardly know each other. How did you get to be enemies so soon? Wally looked at Caroline. I dare you, his eyes told her. We we're just fooling around, Mom. Yeah, just goofing off. Nobody's hurt. Well, let's finish up that last window then and have some refreshments. For a moment, they all looked as though they were going to laugh, Wally thought. They did look funny with their heads dripping water, their clothes soaking wet. And when Mrs. Malloy brought out the donuts and cider, they sat on the steps to eat. He thought for maybe one-fifth of a second that the war might be over. That was before Mrs. Malloy went back inside, however. That was before the boys started home because they had not gone 10 feet from the house when suddenly, bam, pow, piff, splat, Two wet rags and two soggy sponges hit the boys on the back of their necks. And when Wally and his brothers wheeled around, the Malloy girls were disappearing inside the house and the door slammed shut. That does it, said Jake. We've got to do something. What's the scariest thing you can think of, Wally? We'll start with Beth. Have you thought of anything yet? And as always, Wally said the first thing that came to mind. Floating heads like we used to do with the Bensons on Halloween? Wally, it's wonderful, it's perfect. Floating heads, said Josh. Wow, said Peter.